books, portals of imagination and knowledge, where words can breathe life and where plots immerse us in distant realms. From ancient wisdom to modern epics, they are windows that reflect the souls of the author, inviting readers to their universe of boundless wonder awaiting exploration. But one book amongst many has intrigued the world, its secrets remaining a debate amongst experts and scholars. The Voynich Manuscript, popularly known as the world's most mysterious manuscript, or the book nobody can read, is an ancient illustrated codex written in an unknown script and language known as Voynichese. Strange, right? I mean, for something that remains only partially deciphered to this day, it must be special for it to have a language already, though most of its information remains in the dark. It was written on vellum, created from the hides of animals, which at the time was used as a type of parchment, used as some sort of paper for writing. With the use of radiocarbon dating and the period when vellum was employed, we can safely conclude the book dates from the early 5th to 15th centuries, during the Italian Renaissance, a period of immense aesthetic and intellectual growth. The Voynich manuscript is named after Wilfred Voynich, a Polish antique book trader who ran one of the largest book businesses of rare contents, but is primarily recognized as the manuscript's eponym. He bought the book in 1912 from the Villa Mondragone in Italy, together with 30 other manuscripts, one of which was eventually identified as the Voynich Manuscript. Its original author, place of origin, as well as the history and intent behind it, remain unknown. Still, there were speculations that there were owners prior to Wilfred, such as Rudolf II, Holy Roman Emperor and King of Bohemia, mathematician John Dee, who was assumed to be the one who sold the manuscript to Rudolf himself, as he was known to have a large collection of Beacon manuscripts, Another suggestion was that some illustrations in the books of an Italian engineer, Giovanni Fontana, who was familiar with cryptography incorporating it into his books. In a vortex of conjecture, theories, and assumptions swirl. Could the Voynich manuscript be a remnant of a long-forgotten language with ancient roots that hides the knowledge of a vanished civilization? Or does it hint at remarkable beings from worlds other than our own, leaving this strange journal as a record of their cosmic journeys. The Voynich manuscript has 240 pages of text, most of which is unrecognizable, as well as some additional writing in Latin script. The majority of the text that is written runs from left to right. The characters are generally composed of simple pen strokes, often consisting of one or two strokes. While there is some dispute with regard to the distinctiveness of particular characters, it is largely agreed that a script consisting of 20-25 characters was created, which could account for the majority of the text. This is similar to how the English alphabet uses a set of letters and symbols to represent the fundamentals of speech and communication. Although there are a number of peculiar characters scattered throughout the book, it's fascinating to notice that there is no obvious punctuation which in a way goes against the idea that the text was originally intended to represent a language. Remember that this was one of the first forms of written communication, and that mistakes were unavoidable in an era when the art of writing was still in its infancy. It's also worth noting that there are no errors or corrections throughout the document. Since there is no delay between characters as would generally be expected in encoded text, it is likely that the symbols were not enciphered. Only a few words are believed to have been written in a language other than the unknown script when it comes to extraneous writing. These include a sequence of Latin letters in the right margin, an additional line of writing in Latin script in the top margin, a few words near a drawing of a nude man interpreted as a high German phrase, the names of ten months written in Latin script within the astrological section, and four lines written in distorted Latin script with characteristics resembling European alphabets of the late 14th and 15th centuries. Several transcription alphabets, such as the extensible Voynich alphabet EVA, have been developed to equate Voynich letters with Latin characters for cryptanalysis. However, none have proven successful in decoding. The Voynich manuscript is further divided into six sections, each with its own array of illustrations and subject matter. The herbal section has 112 folios. This section features one or two plants on each page, along with some text. The format is in the style of European herbals from the time period, 
Surprisingly, some drawings in this part are larger and cleaner reproductions of sketches from the pharmaceutical section. However, the precise nature of the showcased plants is unknown because they cannot be identified conclusively. The second section is devoted to the astronomical realm, with 21 volumes and circular diagrams bearing galactic or celestial meanings. Suns, moons, and stars are depicted in certain diagrams. One set of 12 diagrams depicts zodiacal constellation symbols, each accompanied by 30 feminine figurines grouped in concentric bands. Females, who appear commonly half-naked, hold labeled stars or have stars attached to their arms. Sadly, the final two pages of this section, Aquarius and Capricornus, have been lost. Aries and Taurus in particular are divided into four paired diagrams, each with 15 women and 15 stars. The third section is the balneological portion. This area, which contains 20 folios and a complex narrative mixed with its images, depicts little naked women some decorated with crowns, bathing in interconnected pools and tubs via an extensive network of pipes. The cosmological section, which consists of 13 folios, comes next. Spherical diagrams can also be seen in this section, however it's unclear what exactly they represent. Notably, the Rosette's folio, a fold-out, is six pages long. It displays a map or graphic with nine islands or rosettes, that are connected by causeways and have castles on them. The enigmatic atmosphere of this region is further enhanced by the presence of a representation that resembles a volcano. Five, pharmaceutical section. Comprising 34 folios, this section features various labeled illustrations that highlight isolated plant components such as roots and leaves and items resembling apothecary jars. A few pieces of writing are included with the style ranging from regular to fantastical. It contains some illustrations that resemble medicinal product sketches, but with extra elements that seem odd. It's intriguing to observe that hybrid drawings are also shown, which incorporate roots, leaves, and flowers from many species. The Voynich manuscript, albeit cryptic, inspired writers to write brilliantly in a variety of ways by exposing them to a kaleidoscope of concepts about the book's mysteries and serving as an inspiration for their works. Author Alex Scarrow in his Time Writers series, The Doomsday Code, where the plot, the protagonist Adam Lewis, a British computer hacker, finds his name in the Voynich manuscript after decoding a section of it. Or in The Book of Life, a fantasy novel by American scholar Deborah Harkness, her third book in the All Souls trilogy. It focuses on Diana Bishop, a historian who is descended from witches, and Matthew Claremont, a vampire with a long lifespan as they unravel the hidden secrets of an old manuscript. Another great example would be Max McCoy in his renowned Indiana Jones and the Philosopher's Stone book, where Indiana Jones hunts down an English alchemist, a Renaissance scholar, and a stolen manuscript containing the great alchemical secrets of immortality and transmuting base metals to gold. There are countless examples of various stories and authorial points of view. All of these remarkable plots made use of the inept strangeness of the manuscript, as well as their speculative presumptions about the manuscript, to provide readers with content that indulged them and left them thrilled with the knowledge that was offered. Well, it did well to provide inspiration for a work that is still barely close to being deciphered, didn't it? As perplexing as it may seem, we currently don't know a lot about this document, Perhaps a small breakthrough in technology is all that's required to give its real decoding a sufficient push. From an alternate viewpoint, we would suppose that the pieces of data necessary to reveal its significance remain to be found. I believe the original author was a wanderer who enjoyed moving about. By looking at the available folios that contain illustrations capturing the cosmos and astronomy, it's assumed that he was a traveler who moved around trying to gain more insight into these fields and along his journey could have gained knowledge about the other concepts mentioned in the folio. In addition to these facts, were there traces of various languages such as Latin and Greek? Taking that into consideration, it would seem undoubtedly evident he was a voyager. Keep in mind that ancient astronomers spoke primarily Greek. Having said that, it is pointless to simply learn a language without intending to use it for communication. Last but not least, we may make the imaginative claim that the author was an alien being, 
Hear me out. Since there are no conclusive arguments for or against the identity of the original author, any idea could be advanced and, if supported by appropriate evidence, could even be proven to be true. But what do you think the Voynich manuscript was really about and what was its purpose? Share your thoughts in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video and learned a little more about the Voynich manuscript, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content that uncovers the mysteries of art, history, and culture. Stay curious, stay inspired, and until next time, goodbye.